welcome to my second episode of the One More Stitch podcast, where I talk about all things knitting related, um, yarn acquisitions, as well as other various crafty things that I'm up to. Uh, my name is Sharon, and you can find me at Ray Knits on Instagram, Etsy, Ravelry, and here on YouTube. Um, I will leave all my links down in the description below so you can find me more easily. Uh, so for this episode, I wanted it to be a little bit more special because everyone knows that in October people go to Rhinebeck for the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, and this year I had the opportunity to go, and it was very exciting, and I have lots of very nice yarns um, that I will share with you. For starters, I will talk about what I'm wearing right now. Uh, this is the Moonset Tea by Haley of Ozetta, and I was a test knitter for her. Um, this is knit in Sandiskarn in Teen Line, or Teen Line, um, and it's a linen cotton blend, and it's very soft and airy and summery. Um, today, it's pretty warm outside. Uh, it's not really too much fall in the air right now, uh, but hopefully it does cool back down again. Uh, while I was in New York, I did miss out on the big storm that hit California, so I missed out on that. During my trip to New York, I did finish uh, two main projects I was working on. Um, well, I guess one of them was a finished object in my very first episode, but I did add the buttons in, and it was the champagne cardigan, and I did give the, gift this to my mom, so I will insert a picture at some point in this video. Um, and it turned out really nicely. I put on these little brown buttons, and yeah, I really liked how it turned out. Um, and the second one that I finished was the Versal pullover that I knit for my dad. Uh, it turned out also really well. The saddle shoulder fits uh, very nicely, uh, and in general I think it actually does fit a little better than the regular raglan style. Um, the saddle shoulder extends a little bit more along the shoulders, so that gives it a little bit more shaping. Um, so those are the two finished objects that I have today, even though I can't show it to you. Um, however, on my ver next podcast episode, I will go through all of my other works and progresses and finished objects that I've been working on. So for, at Rhinebeck, I guess I'll start off by talking to you about my experience there and sort of what it was like as a first time goer. Um, so we got there around 10, 11-ish, um, definitely wasn't early and was not during the opening hours of Rhinebeck, so I think we missed out on a lot of the heavy traffic and um, flow into the actual festival. So when we got there, there was no line to get into the parking area and there was also no line to get through the gates and bag check, so that was all very nice. Um, I do want to say a big thank you to all the organizers and the volunteers at Rhinebeck. They did a really great job of organizing parking. Um, there were so many cars and I think overall it went really smoothly. Uh, so when I got there, after listening around to a bunch of other podcasts, I realized that I missed out on the apple cider donuts and the apple cider. Um, I did see the line, but it was so long, I was like, ah, oh, it's okay, we don't need to go there. Um, but, you know, <laughs> after watching the po other podcasts, I realized, oh, it was actually something that we probably should have gotten. Um, but that's okay, there's always other years that we can go back. Our first stop was to look through all the various tents, um, kind of go through what was there, scope out the scene a little bit, and then decide what yarns I should be bringing back home and what yarns I really wanted to buy. So throughout the entire festival, um, you'll pass by these giant tents. Um, well, not, ex not exactly tents. I use, there are these giant buildings as well as these barns. So in the giant buildings, there are a lot of vendors. Uh, it, was, it kind of went in like a loop and then there was also like fiber sales in the back of one of them. So you can just walk through and look at all the various vendors, all the really nice yarn. Um, 
and see what people were creating with everything. There were also a lot of, a lot of fleeces for sale and um, sheepskins that you could purchase. Um, so then once you left these giant buildings with a lot of vendors in it, there are a lot of barn stable type of buildings that you can also walk through. Um, and these ones are either animals inside, so sheeps, alpacas, various goats, um, or it would be more vendors. So initially we just kind of went down the line of all of the barns and just went through and checked out like what was in it and just looked at all the various yarns that were for sale as well as the various baskets. Um, there's also a stand that had or a vendor that had um, wool pillows so it was pillows filled with wool batting inside and comforters. Um, there are some wood making vendors, um, but mostly it was all yarn. <laughs> so that was really fun. Uh, I also had the chance to watch one of the uh, sheep vote or what was it like the sheep showing contests uh, just to see like which sheep reigned supreme essentially. We saw a lot of sheep in that tent and some of the sheep were getting like brushed out and combed so that they would be nice and pretty for showing um, and some of them were just chilling in their little corners just waiting around all day and having us just like walk around and look at them and some of them were really friendly and they would come up to you and then you could pat them or they would like sniff your hand and rub up against you. Right around the middle area of all these barns, there were some enclosements filled with llamas. So that was really cool. Uh, none of them spit, <laughs> luckily, but they were really friendly and they would walk around looking at everyone um, and grazing on the grass and just being llamas and they're really cute. <laughs> um, so let's begin with my yarn haul and acquisitions of Rhinebeck. Uh, for starters, for <laughs> one of the my most prized possessions that I currently now own is this little guy. Um, so my favorite animal is the alpaca and I don't know what it is about them, whether it's like their cute little face or their extremely soft fur, but I really enjoy, I really like alpacas. Um, they're just so sweet looking and so soft. Um, their fur is also great for making yarns, so I also like that, but overall I just really like alpacas. Maybe someday I'll have a farm and I'll have alpacas. <laughs> um, so here I got a little alpaca doll, and this is by lawnart.net. Um, they make alpaca products. So it's made with genuine alpaca fur and hand stitched. Um, they're animal friendly and they use fair trade practices and detailed hand crafting. So this little guy is really cute. It's also super soft. <laughs> okay, moving along. So I also got um, in the non-yarn related or the non-yarn acquisitions, I got a drop spindle and some fiber. So I got these because I've been wanting to get a little more into spinning and kind of working more with the raw fiber. Um, and I was also really inspired to do this after watching Nick Crit's podcast episode where she starts spinning. Um, so I thought it was perfect time to purchase some materials for it. So I got this white fiber and it is Texas Rambouillet Roving. So it's just a white fiber, a white wool roving. Um, and this comes, so the stand that I got this from, they had a bunch of various rovings and fibers from various farms and uh, various smaller vendors. So they were selling from there. Um, and this one is from Moments in Time Creations Farm located in Salem, New York. Um, and here's a better representation of the fiber because I 
already started spinning some yarn. Um, it's not very even, but hopefully that gets better with time. Uh, definitely takes a little bit of getting used to, but after a while your hand kind of gets used to it. So this is what it looks like. It's really soft. Um, hopefully I'll have enough for a sweater or for like a 100 gram skein of yarn, uh, but we'll see. So yeah, this is one of them. And then I also got this uh, brown gray colored BFL roving. And this is from Fiber Kingdom, also located in Salem, New York. So um, after researching a little bit, I did, I saw that like BFL is a good starter spinning fiber because of the long staple lengths. It's a little easier to actually get it to uh, work with you, especially for beginners. So I decided to get some BFL to try out and this is two ounces and I haven't actually opened this yet. So it's time to touch it. <laughs> Oh, okay. So this is also really soft. It's a little coarser than the Rambouillet, but um, still extremely soft. Here's a close up of it. I'm not sure how much of it you can actually pick up, but I really like it. Okay. So now on to one of the most fun parts of this podcast is my acquisitions. Um, hopefully you guys also like to see yarn acquisitions as much as I do. Um, I'm always scoping out for new yarns everywhere and I love seeing what people get. Uh, so to start off with, going along the uh, my love for alpacas, the first yarn I purchased was from Morning Moon Alpacas. So they had a whole bunch of alpaca, alpaca blend yarns and I did get sweater quantities of each of these colors. And the composition of these are 70% 70, 70 alpaca, 20% merino, and 10% silk and it is a sport weight and these are all the alpaca's natural colors which I really enjoy. I mean, they're so beautiful and so neutral, which I love. And it's also super, super soft. I think because there's some merino and silk added into the yarn, um, it does kind of blend and um, reduce some of the prickle factor that alpaca might sometimes have. Um, so it's really nice and it's really soft. <laughs> oh, and um, these run at about 325 yards for around four ounces, or which is around approximately 100 grams, but a little more. Uh, so the yardage is pretty good on these. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to make with it yet, but if you have any suggestions for a sport weight um, cardigan or sweater, please feel free to drop it in the comments below and let me know. I'm also always on the hunt for new patterns. Moving right along, I have these beautiful skeins from Green Mountain Spinnery. Ta-da! So I also did get sweater quantities of these. Um, so let's begin with this big one over here. It's a really big skein. This is approximately 100 grams and it runs at 250 yards per 100 grams and it's a worsted weight yarn. Um, it's natural and undyed so it's super beautiful. I love the way that undyed natural yarn looks because um, it shows off like the sheep's natural colors, which I find is really gorgeous. 
So this is organic wool um, and it's processed in Vermont. And this specific yarn is the main organic two ply worsted weight, 100% uh, wool organically grown in Maine. And I really like that um, in their little tag, they tell you a little bit about how the yarn is processed. So it says the yarn has been washed and spun using non-petroleum soaps and oils. No chemicals have been used to moth proof, shrink proof, or remove chafe. So I think that's really nice um, to know of the company and it makes me want to support them further. Uh, so this yarn is two ply and it's really squishy. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Peace Fleece and I'm hoping that this will most likely bloom once it's been like washed and blocked and worn a bit. Uh, I got a sweater's quantity worth of, wor worth of this and I'm hoping to make either a larger sweater or even a longer cardigan. Um, since it is worsted weight and it's pretty thick and heavy, uh, this will make a really great winter sweater or cardigan, which I'm very excited about. And then the next yarn I got at Green Mountain Spinnery is this lovely blue one. So this yarn is the Lana. And it's a two-ply fingering weight uh, made of 100% fine wool. So this yarn is 100% wool. Originally, I wanted to make some summer garments with it, but since it is 100% wool, it might be a little warm, but that's okay. Um, it'll most likely... So I was thinking of doing the Anchors or Anchors shirt by Petite Knit. Um, that one has this fingering weight, and so is this, and I think it would be really pretty. Um, the dimension of this yarn is gorgeous, so there's like white and blue flecks. And it creates this really pretty light blue color. Oh, and the color name is Bahia. And then the last yarn I got from Green Mound Spinnery is this yarn. So this is Cotton Comfort and it's 20% organic cotton and 80% fine wool. Uh, let's see. So this is only... Um, 50 grams approximately uh, and it runs with approximately 180 yards and it's a DK weight so this will be very versatile in the patterns that I make with it. Um, I'm not, also not sure what exactly I'm going to be making with this yarn so if you have any suggestions feel free to let me know. Um, this is in the color silver and I believe Uh, I think this one's also a natural color. It looks like it's undyed, which is really pretty. Um, again, I love the sheep's natural colors. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love dyed yarn as well. Um, the colors that are created with dyed yarns are amazing, uh, but I will always appreciate the wool's natural color too. Um, and the thought process of what I was purchasing while looking through yarns was generally um, various wools that I wouldn't be able to find locally here in California. So I wanted to get some more unique fibers and wools um, from various sheep. So I really like that a lot of these yarns that I purchased were um, from local farms and from local sheep and alpacas. <laughs> okay, next I have these yarns. Oh, it's upside down. So these are from Primrose Yarn Co. Um, so let's start with this one. So this is the house fingering 
and I got this in the color Jane Austen um, when I got there there are only five skeins left um, so of course I had to pick them all up <laughs> um, the only issue that I will I might run into when knitting with this is that um, the die lots are different so when knitting I'll actually have to alternate skeins which I don't usually do I even though I probably should but you know <laughs> sometimes I don't most of the time I don't <laughs> uh, so these three are more gray brownie colored and then these two skeins are more purpley red aubergine even though they are the same shade um, when hand dyed yarns are put into different dye lots they can come out looking slightly variegated and different than each skein but I really like the color so I figured I would might as well just get them and either I can make a giant shawl and um, use another for um, a lightweight sweater or if I just wanted to alternate skeins I could so it gives me quite a bit of options and it's a really pretty brown eggplanty color um, yeah it's very hard to describe and kind of hard to see through video but it's really pretty okay and then so this next yarn that i got is part of their uh, rowan dk collection and this is a six fit nah, this is a 60 percent american superwash merino blended with 40% domestic non-superwash merino. So there's superwash and non-superwash in this yarn. And I got this in this like gray, browny, light taupey color. Um, it's really pretty and I've been really into these shades of yarn, this like gray, brown, taupey colors. Oh, and this is in the color Static. And I forgot to mention that the house fingering is 50% merino and 50% Shetland wool. And it comes in 100 grams with approximately 400 yards. And the Rowan DK comes in 100 grams with approximately 230 yards. And Primrose Yarn Co. is dyed um, in York, Pennsylvania. I think I am actually nearing the end soon. So the next yarn that I got, um, so I stopped by this little vendor on, I forget where we were going, but we were on the way to something else and we saw it and they were having some yarns um, on sale for $10 a skein and they were 90% merino wool and then 10% angora. And I've never actually knitted with Angora wool before, so I was really excited for this and um, with how affordable the price is. So I had to grab a bunch. So this is the yarn that I got. Um, it's this really pretty light muted blue or like a muted sky blue. Uh, I did get eight skeins of this, so I can either make uh, two sweaters or a really big cardigan jacket type of thing. Um, I'll probably do two sweaters and then also gift one to my mom. So this is the yarn. It's really squishy. I think it's about a DK light worsted weight. It's definitely not a full worsted and it's definitely thinner than the Green Mountain Spinnery Worsted Wool. Uh, it's also very light and plush, which I like, and it, this will definitely be next to Skin Soft. Ta-da!
Okay, and my last yarn acquisition is from a company called Tidal Yarns. So they um, make really naturally dyed yarns. Well, the yarns are all naturally dyed um, with like various vegetable types of dyes. Um, so they also use uh, local wools and they dye on local wools. So this first one is actually the natural color of the sheep. So it's this chocolatey brown and it's really pretty. I've also been really enjoying browns lately. <laughs> So these are approximately 100 grams and 240 yards. Um, they run at a worsted weight. And then the color that I got next, um, kind of to match it, I want to do color work, is this one. So this is dyed with matter and it creates this burgundy maroon type of color. And this brown natural yarn is actually the base of this one that was dyed on. So they will actually go really well together since their undertones are all the same. Um, originally, I wanted to get a sweater's quantity worth of this yarn that was dyed with matter, but I went a little too late and they were sold out. <laughs> so I was only able to get two skeins of this. And then the only yarn they have left was three skeins of this brown one. So together I have five skeins, but now I have to figure out what type of color work sweater I want to knit with it. Um, or if I want to do some color blocking or sleeve details. Uh, I think this brown one will be the color of the main body of the sweater or cardigan. Um, and this red one will be more of like the accent color since there's less of it. I'm really excited to create something that can use both of these yarns together. And then last but not least, as we were leaving and um, about to run out because the storm was coming, um, I had to grab a Rhinebeck bag. So this is the bag that Rhinebeck was having for the year of 2021. Um, I think it's really cute. It's a really nice sturdy canvas tote bag. Um, there are also two pockets here. And on the front they have all various animals. And then in, and then in here I just have the rest of my alpaca yarn <laughs> um, stored in here just to give it some shape. Okay, so yeah, that was all my acquisitions at Rhinebeck. Um, nice. What else is there to talk about? Um, it was really fun and it was really overwhelming. There was so much to look through and I wish I had spent more time at each booth and been able to uh, look through more of the yarns. Um, I think maybe if I do go back next year, I'll try to plan it out a little more. Although I feel like once you get there, all your plans kind of just go out the window. <laughs> um, so sometimes there's no point really in planning and you might as well just go with the flow and see what you wanna do once you actually get there. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you enjoyed my yarn haul. Um, I'll see you again next week, I think, for a normal podcast episode where I talk about my works and progresses and my finished objects of the month of October or since my last podcast episode. And it'll also be an intro to November type of podcast. So that'll be really nice. Um, I hope to bring some more content to you as well and recruit some other people to get on my podcast and do some more interactive types of videos. 
Uh, so yeah, hope you have a good Halloween and rest of October, and I'll see you soon. Bye!